For the second part of today's session, we are to discuss the literature review. I am Marina P.S. Labon, a teacher from Ternate Integrated National High School, along with my partner, Mrs. Cora L. Del Rosario, the president of Ternate Municipal Research Committee, Ternate District. At the end of the session, the participants should be able to explain the meaning of literature review, synthesize information from relevant literature, and write a coherent review of literature. The content of this session includes literature review, what it is and what it is not, how to write a literature review, plagiarism, how to avoid plagiarism. According to Division Memorandum no Number 178, Series of 2020, or the Division Research Management Guidelines of School Year 2020 to 2021, Literature Review is the second part of the Basic Research Proposal. Basically, it contains an objective and concise summary or account of what has been published on a topic by accredited scholars and researchers. It must be defined by a guiding concept or the research topic that you have chosen. This provides an overview of the current knowledge, allowing you to identify the theories, methods, and gaps in the existing research. The sources of literature review includes the books, e-books or the hard copy of books, published studies, and journal articles that could be found in the internet. One reminder is that a good literature review doesn't just summarize sources. It analyzes, synthesizes, and critically evaluates to give a clear picture of the state of knowledge on the subject. It is like building a bookshelf. For example, you will use book A as the source of your literature review and you will cite there that according to Abad 2017, he states that, and you will use another source such as an article or article B, Remulia said that, and study C, which is written by Cruz. So you can say that according to Cruz, or Cruz 2020 said that, so that is like building a bookshelf. You will combine the different sources that you have gathered. What it is not. So literature review is not just a copy and paste method of generating information. So that would be plagiarism if we do that. So ito po ay papaliwanag sa susunod ng susunod na speaker. So writing a literature review lets you gain and demonstrate skills in two areas. So dito na develop ang ating ability for information seeking or the ability to scan the literature efficiently using manual or the computerized method. Through this, we are learning how to identify a set of useful articles and books that is needed to be included in our study. The second skill that is being demonstrated is our critical appraisal. So this includes our ability to apply the principles or analysis to identify unbiased and valid studies. So let's proceed to the most important part of this session, and that is how to write a literature review. Before you begin searching for literature, you need a clearly defined topic. For this session, our example topic is the impact of social media on the mental health of teenagers. So the first step is that you search for relevant review on the topic. 
lahat tayo ay marunong nang mag-search through our cellphone or through the use of our laptop. Nowadays, internet and searching is very common. So, lahat tayo marunong nitong step one. And we use different search engines such as Google Scholar, Institute of Education Sciences that publishes e-journals, Science Direct, Philippine e-journals. And on the next slide, I will show different sources, the link, the username, and password para makapasok tayo sa mga websites na ito such as the Philippine e-journals, IG Library, ProQuest Central, EBSEO, Gale Databases, the Press Reader, ProQuest eBook Central, World Scientific, Taylor and Francis eBooks, Cambridge Core, Emerald Management Plus, the eJournals, Sage Journals, and Eric. These are just some of the sources or places where we can generate or search for literature review for our future study. So now let me give you some tips on how to use the Google Scholar. So first, we must list out keywords, key concepts, or variables. For our example topic is the impact of social media on the mental health of teenagers. For this topic, the keywords to be typed in the Google Scholar search bar is mental health. We can search for bad image, teenager, social media. It could be Facebook, to be more specific, or Instagram. So these are examples of keywords that you can search in the search bar of the Google Scholar. Second is you identify the synonyms and the subtopics. So for the synonyms of teenagers, there are some words such as Generation Z or the younger generations. For the synonyms of mental health, we can use the word body image, self-perception, or self-esteem. And for the synonyms of social media, there are more specific subtopics such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, or TikTok. We can also use Boolean operators to help narrow down our search. For example, we can use the word and. In this example, in the screen, social media and mental health. So this means that all keywords will be included in the search, both the word mental health and social media. But if we use the word or, we are going to generate results that search for either of the synonym. For example, teenager only or younger generation only. Either of the two will appear in the result of our searching in the Google Scholar. Use of the word minus, the minus sign. This is needed to exclude the terms you don't want in the result. For example, the word apple. It could mean two things nowadays. Apple as a fruit or apple that is the brand of a famous technology. So if we want to search for the word apple, which is a fruit, we put minus tech so that all the results to be generated is only about the apple fruit. So if we want to search for the apple, which is the brand of a technology or gadget, so we will use apple minus fruit. So lahat ng lalabas would be apple na yung iPhone, iPad. So yun yung lalabas. Okay? And last is the use of quotation marks to search for results with exact matches. So if we want exactly the word social media and mental health to appear in our search, we use quotation marks. So that is the first one. Search for relevant review on the topic. The second step is to evaluate and select sources. As per definition that I've mentioned earlier, 
a good literature review don't just summarize. It does not it is not just a copy paste thing or tapos pagsasamasamahin. So we analyze, synthesize, and evaluate. So para kang nagkukwento. Now we make sure that the sources are credible or published by accredited scholars or authors. So since literature review is like telling a story, there are some parts such as the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. So first is we read the abstract. So sa abstract, ito po yung part ng research which summarizes the whole research paper. So there we can see the introduction or the rationale why the research was conducted, the results, of course, and the conclusion of the study. So kapag nabasa natin ang abstract, that is when we can decide if it is necessary to be included in our literature review. Second is we also need to browse the bibliography. In every research paper, we can find in the latter part the bibliography or the references that the author have used or utilized during his study. So, maaari natin makita sa references yung mga journals, books, or articles that the researcher have used. And this could be also helpful in our study. And also, we take note of recurring citations. Kung ito ay paulit-ulit lumalabas, the authors, the books, and the articles, then this just means that it is important that we include it in our study. And also, in the Google Scholar, we can see the number of times that the article has been cited. In this example, Makikita natin na mayroong cited 29 times, 181, and 354. So, the higher the citation count, the more that it is influential. So, therefore, you include it in the literature review of, res of your research study. So, that's the second one. We evaluate and select sources. Third one is we identify themes, debates, or gaps. So, in making a literature review, for example, may nakuha kang book, meron kang nagamit na, na publish thesis or publish research by someone that you know or someone that you don't know, and an e-journal. E so, through all those sources, you will identify the connections and relationship among those three in order to synthesize, analyze, and evaluate yung magiging content ng iyong literature review. So what are you going to look for? So first, look for the trends and patterns in terms of the theory, methods, or results. So you ask yourself this question such as, are there studies that focus on the same aspect of the topic or uses the same methods? Meron bang magkakatulad? No, meron bang magkakatulad ng dinamit na methodology or same results gathered? And do certain approaches become more or less popular over time? Nakikita natin sa isang timeline na 2008 or 2015, doon pala nagsisimulang mag maging trending yung use of social media, makikita natin yung trend or pattern. So for this generation, no, we can see the importance or the impact of social media. In terms of education naman, for this season of COVID-19, ang pinaka-relevant or pinaka-trend is the online learning, modular learning, um, what else? The flipped classroom, synchronous or asynchronous learning. So those are good starting points for, for your literature review, if that would be your topic. Actually, literature review is something that is neglected. No? Kasi sometimes we focus more on the, on the methodology part, no? which is also important. However, your literature review, napakahalaga rin niya. Kasi it gives you, as the, bilang researcher, it gives you the idea of what studies had been published 
na related sa study mo. Kung baga sa defense ng research proposal, yun yung magiging bala natin na magagamit natin to defend our study. Okay? So second, what are we going to look for? We look for themes. What questions or concepts recur across the literature? Ano ba yung paulit-ulit na lumalabas? So we identify what theme is common during our conduct or search of the literature review. Third, we look for debates, conflicts, and contradictions. Where do sources disagree? For example, sabi dito sa study A, it is effective. Sabi sa study B, it is not effective. So you can include both of those studies wherein you say na Cruz said that ganto. Pero on the contrary, sabi naman ni Abad, ay ganto naman. So we identify yung debates no, or conflicts or contradictions on the same study pero magkaiba yung sinasabi. Next is you look for influential studies or important publications. Are there any influential theories or studies that change the direction of the field? So yung theories, oftentimes these are, these are established truths or foundation na napakahalagang maging framework or basis of our study. So we include that. Kasi pag tayo ay nagde-defense ng proposal, we can quote or cite those important publications. And also, we look for gaps. What is missing from the literature? Ano ang hindi pa naaaral sa topic na yon? Sa so example topic natin na impact of social media in the mental health of teenagers, maraming study about Facebook and Instagram. But there are less studies on the effect of TikTok and um, Twitter in the mental health of the teenagers. So we could include that. And that could be a good basis of our study. So are there weakness that is needed to be addressed? So this could be answered in the literature review. So those are the first three steps on how to write a literature review. First is to search for relevant review on the topic. I have already shown and given the list of sources na pwede natin paghanapan ng literature review. Second is evaluate and select sources. So the sources must be credible and napakahalaga nun that it is accredited by researchers, researchers and scholars. And third is to identify themes, debates, or gaps. So that way, we are synthesizing and analyzing our literature review. So for the fourth and fifth part of how to write a literature review, it will be discussed by the next speaker, Ma'am Cora L. Del Rosario. So that would be all for my part. Thank you very much.